Well, 343 just concluded their live stream detailing a lot of really interesting things about Season 2 of Halo Infinite. Talking about the Battle Pass, the full walkthrough of that, campaign co-op flighting, forge information, what drop pods really are going to be about, and narrative events, and a whole lot more. So, if you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. One of the first things 343 jumped into is the reasoning behind season two being six months long. Again, basically a full year with two full seasons. Not exactly their ideal situation, and they agree with that as well. And they said they're not happy about that situation either. They're pretty apprehensive about sharing that information. It's probably why the roadmap took so long to come out. But the reason why they stated that it's going to be taking six months is because they want to prioritize quality of life improvements. That was a huge thing that they brought up within this live stream. One thing they showed, for example, within the stream is that player outlines, you can completely remove those outlines if you want to within the game, which is a really great feature. But other quality of life improvements that they're looking to continually improve would be the anti-cheat, which is something they would constantly will be working on. It's a never-ending battle against hackers. Uh, the ranked experience, which I'm actually very excited about, and they actually even mentioned ranked playlist updates. So we could possibly get some new ranked modes and playlists coming in with Season 2 eventually at some point with these drop pods which we'll talk a little bit later they also mentioned about quality of life improvements being like networking improving the desync issue getting shot around corners and things like that which has been a big issue it's definitely well, definitely was improved with the mid-season update uh, for season one uh, but certainly it does exist still and also more long-term things we're talking about quality of life talking about per match experience and spartan careers like actually have like a service record like we have always had in halo but they're, they're working on it it's in the it's in the works for now uh, but this is all going to be coming in within drop pods, which are basically ways for a monthly way to bring in some new content, features and bugs and fixes and things like that. And we talked about this in a previous video when they first announced the roadmap and things like that on the channel. If you guys want to listen in on that, you know, obviously appreciate it. More checking out the content here. The drop pods will continue on past season two, into season three, into season four and beyond. It'll just be a continuous thing that we'll be looking to receive. Now, they didn't really state exactly what's going to be coming in these drop pods. Though throughout the stream, they kind of drop a few hints of what to expect. Like I said, it ranges anywhere from content to features to bug fixes. Honestly, like it's really like that's what's going to be possible in there. They don't, they didn't bother to state uh, what's going to be in the first drop pod, but they're still working on that right now. Really huge thing that they're talking about right now is campaign co-op fighting going to be happening, guys. So, uh, well, most likely we'll probably get a chance to play that probably like the month before the uh, ideal release, which is going to be set in August. And so maybe like around July, we probably could get a chance to do some campaign co-op. And Joseph Staten even brought up an update talking about it, saying that it's in a good state. They're looking good, moving forward with campaign co-op. So I'm definitely excited about that because this campaign, for, especially for Halo Infinite, uh, it's like breeze and just would live off of campaign co-op and i'm very excited to see that networking co-op coming back uh, split screen co-op is going to be coming around in season three a little bit later uh talking about uh flighting they also brought up forge on top of that as well and then they, we do know that that forge is going to be releasing in a beta state so a lot of people are kind of worried about if there's going to be any barriers or any kind of cut content from forge or if their content that they make within forge will even persist and they or eased all our concerns and said that this is gonna be a full feature set launch of Forge, but in a beta state. I have a feeling this is basically gonna be the release of Forge, like in August, which is, or September, I should say, where flighting will happen in August. Much like how the Halo Infinite multiplayer launched in beta form when it came to November, but it basically was the launch of the feature. And I'm pretty sure this is sounding about the same when it comes to Forge as well. And they did say that they will be looking to add in some more additional palettes moving forward. This was slightly concerning to see how many palettes are gonna be available. But for everything I've heard from anyone who's part of the Forge Council and all the leaks that we've seen, Forge is looking to be not just like Forge, but like a complete step up, an evolution, a next generational evolution of Forge. Uh, this is going to be massive. This is why it's been taking so long. So definitely looking forward to that as well. All, so they said all your creations that you make within Forge during the beta phase will persist. They'll stay through. You'll be able to just continue playing it, which is going to be great. Now, narrative events are going to be a very interesting thing coming in. This is a brand new thing for season two. Now, they weren't exactly like descriptive of how narrative events will play into the gameplay much. Uh, but they stated that basically the, the idea is that the Lone Wolves brought something dangerous back to the Academy and what the effects of that could be. 
uh, that we did get a little bit of a teaser of the intro of the trailer for the narrative event, which kind of saw a, uh, you know, our Spartan, Spartan Din and Eklund in there. Interesting thing though, is that your Spartan, your custom Spartan will take place within the cutscenes as well for the narrative events, which is really cool. And they also say that this will be a continuous thing growing out throughout the seasons. This isn't just like a one time off thing. It seems like there'd be a continuous story being told through the multiplayer experiences. Now they did, they did say that through gameplay, you'll be able to evolve the story, but they didn't really say exactly how that's going to work out. If it's just going to be like, Hey, the community needs to get like, I don't know, 5 million kills in multiplayer or something like that. And then it unlocks a new section or something. They didn't really state anything like that. Uh, so it's kind of iffy to see like how it's actually gonna all play out because since season one it was just like a, a cool you know academy trailer and that was about it i would like to see some more interactivity involving these narrative events but we'll see what happens uh, the first narrative event does launch with season two we do have a second half of the narrative event as well next they brought on jerry hook to talk about the live team elements the store the progression the battle pass and things like that so we had that revealed which was really awesome one of the updates with the store for season two they're looking to focus more on the content that's new to halo right because the thing a big issue that i had as well with season one with the store and was that a lot of it was just kind of armor sets that we've already had in a Halo game, like Hazop for the Mark V armor set, which was free back in Halo Reach. Well, you had to pay for it in Halo Infinite, which I just thought, I just, I just never really rubbed me the right way. But when it comes to content like the Cyber Showdown stuff, then like, yeah, I was able to willing to jump in and you know pay for that. I thought it was kind of an interesting bit of customization. So looking to focus more on the more unique things, like as I'm sure that's probably seen from the community is what their buying per, you know, habits are that Probably this more unique content is probably what people are really looking to buy into. Um, they also mentioned that they're looking to completely remove. Another thing they mentioned is that they're looking to completely move away from the core system. I didn't think they were going to completely jump off ship from this. I knew that they were going to try to evolve things a little bit within the core canon of the armor sets like the Mark 7 and the Mark 5, where you can maybe trade out some visors and some different kind of attachments and things like that. But it looks like they're going to try to like evolve out of the core system and just kind of just general customization, which was pretty cool. I still think there's a lot that can be done with the core system i think it's a cool idea uh it's just that right now we're kind of feeling the pain because there just isn't that much customization for core a few years down the line it would be an interesting system to kind of work with but i do also mention with the fracture cores, they're looking to kind of leave those to themselves and the more canon cores as they refer to them would be more customizable for cross customization i do mention stuff like this would be available in a drop pod kind of thing when you get these different bits of customization freedoms being brought to your halo infinite character which is cool so that we have a little bit like I said, a little bit of an insight what drop pods are going to be like. I also got a chance to do a complete look through of the battle pass for season two, and there's a lot more free content for you free players right there. Actually, they think they said about 60% more free unlocks are gonna be part of it. We also do know that there's gonna be the 1,000 credits you can earn within the battle pass as well. They also stated within events that things like swaps and boosts have been completely removed and that permission will be only be found within the battle pass, which I'm hoping that we don't run out of the stuff <laughs> because, uh, you know, I definitely, definitely need to use my challenge boost when it kind of swaps when it comes to Halo Infinite a lot of times because the challenges are, they can be kind of trying sometimes to say the least. There was this interesting interruption that happened during the reveal of the battle pass, which had like a bit of like a data transfer kind of thing happening. I'm not sure if this is some kind of like viral marketing thing that they're trying to do with season two or some kind of like underlying story that they're looking to kind of implement in there. I definitely will take a deeper look into this guys to figure out what's going on with that. If you find any good information, I'll pass that on to you guys as well. And just to add a little fun bonus guys, George's shoulder finally got textured. It's textured down. That's great. And also the cyber showdown alignments of this, so those two visors have been fixed up as well. Overall, season two is looking to be a great season, guys. Uh, pretty much right up until August. Like I've said earlier, that I think right up until August is when I think we'll start noticing like, yeah, things are looking not so great when it comes to content wise. But from May until August, it's gonna be pretty good. I am definitely will be playing it a ton. I'll definitely we will be streaming on my Twitch channel. Link in the description down below, by the way. And I'll catch you all in season two. So if you guys are new to the channel, I'm missing content from recently, check out this playlist right here. I got linked to all my Halo news and informational videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you all in the next one. Peace out.